I keep hearing the rumor that white furniture is dead, and I'm not here to debate whether or not that is true, but I have noticed that people are trending more towards warmer beiges and tans, and so I have a great solution for you if you are looking to update or just ready for a change on your white furniture or white cabinets. Now, this finish works really great off of a white base. That's the preferred method, and so it works really great if your furniture is already that color or your cabinets are already that color, like the piece I'm working on today. The minute I found this dresser off Facebook Marketplace for $75, I knew it was going to be the perfect candidate for this finish because it was already white and the shape of it I just was in love with. There were just a few changes I wanted to make, like separating it from this mirror and jewelry combination that was sitting on top of it just to give it a more modern look. And then I also wanted to change the placement of the hardware to go with more what I'm seeing in the Pottery Barn and Restoration Hardware Studio McGee doing. The hardware typically or the handles are in line with one another so they're going to be in one straight line going down the dresser versus you know over to the right and then over to the left and giving like a zigzag feel so we're going to streamline that hardware if your piece is already white and you're not looking to change the hardware you're going to be lightning fast on this project you should be able to knock this out in an afternoon easy but for me i do want to do these repairs and i have some gouges on the top of the dresser that i have to do and so that means i'm going to have to prime and you know fill and sand and prime and do all that annoying stuff but i don't mind because i'm really going to get my dream dresser at the end of this Up next is a primer. I'm gonna throw on one coat of this Styx primer. It's a chalky primer and I like that chalky feel or you could use chalk paint on this particular finish. However, I have used other types of primers for this lighter wood finish. This is not the Pottery Barn finish that so many of you guys love and I am so grateful for all of you guys who have been such a big fan of that finish. Um, but this is a little bit lighter. It's actually quite a bit lighter and it's fewer steps. So it's actually easier than the Pottery Barn finish. I did share this finish a few years ago on my Ikea nightstands or like my bedside tables and I to this day I'm using those day in and day out and I love the look so much and it went so well with um, I did like a grayish blue on my French dresser in my bedroom makeover so I'll link both of those videos in the description in case you want to watch more and more of this type of finish but back to where we were we're painting on the primer and I'm just doing one coat of this and I want to use brush strokes to my advantage brush strokes are actually a desired effect on this piece because we're going for that wood look and so and that's another reason why I chose the chalkier type of primer is because it will give us that build up and you want to go in the direction that you imagine the wood grain is going so going sideways now here I have this leftover mixture this is from back when I did those Ikea nightstands so we're going on two years that this has been in a pasta jar in my garage. I do keep it out of sunlight and in a cool environment to store it, but this is the mixture. It's half paint and half polyurethane, water-based, both water-based products. 
half and half. And if you need to, you can add a little bit more water-based polyurethane. But I had this paint left over from a dresser that I did in the jute and cotton color from Ovation, and I loved it. And then one day I was like, hmm, I wonder if I could, you know, make it a little bit more sheer and create like my own DIY glaze, which is essentially what this is. And it worked. It does dry quicker than a traditional glaze. So, you know, it's not ideal in all aspects, but for the price, you can just use up leftover paint. You really can't go wrong. If you want to add an extender and make this last a little bit longer, you can add just a couple of tablespoons of clear glaze. I do strategically work in the early morning or in the later evening when the sun is not shining and I also try to work in the garage with the garage door closed on these projects in particular because I don't want the finish drying up on me too quickly. So if you're working in the sunshine, this is going to dry up on you so quick and you won't have time to get your brush strokes in with the broom. So, you know, just, just have that in mind. You want to work in a cool environment as best you can. And so you just want to get the paint on there in a nice even coat. It's a fairly thin coat of paint in my opinion. And I just put it on there with like a two inch angled brush. You could use whatever paintbrush you want. And it does not have to be perfect, but just try to go in the direction all the way from one end to the other. And then you're going to go in with the children's broom or whatever broom you have that you want to use. This is my favorite for right now and I get it at the Dollar Tree in the kids section and it has like a stick on it I just take that off and then you're just going to go through and brush it and at this point you know maybe I'm even digging into the chalk paint a little or the the chalky primer a little bit and kind of scraping off this and that's another great reason because it it's chalky it's not going to like flake away or peel away and you can brush as many times as you want, but you know, as it starts to dry, you're going to start getting clumps. I wouldn't panic if you have little boogers or clumps or anything like that in your finish because you can lightly sand those at the end of the project.
we've had several subscribers uh, write in and ask, you know, what do you do on the sides of the piece and whether you should go up and down or across. And for me, it just looks more high end. If I go this direction, I know that that's not what Restoration Hardware and Pottery Barn do on their wood pieces. But for me, it just looks more high end. I've done it both ways and this looks better for me. A lot of times I'll just leave the sides and edges and things like that that I didn't get to and I'll go back with a paintbrush or, or whatever and just touch it up and this finish I, I mentioned it several times it's so forgiving if you missed a spot there were several spots that, that were just completely white that I had missed and or that I, you know I'd brushed away too much and you can just go back and with the foam brush or a paintbrush or whatever and just touch it up it blends so nicely it's very forgiving you can see on these edges here this is such a forgiving finish. I know I keep saying that, but it's so true. And then so that future you will love you or, you know, your customer will love you. A little bit of touch up paint goes a long way. And so these are like a dollar a piece if you buy the sleeve at Walmart or Kroger for me. Um, and then you just put in, this is the mixture of half paint and half um, water-based polyurethane that I'm throwing in there. And I fill it all the way up. I'm very generous when it comes to touch up paint. And I find that my customers really appreciate it. And I appreciate it myself to have it on my pieces because I have kids. And, you know, even on factory finished items, you're, there's going to be chips and things that happen from time to time. So it's just really handy. And then you guys have seen me use this hardware a million times. And you're going to see me use it a million more because I love it so much. It's very heavy in your hand. And I love that feeling. And then also they just, they're so trendy right now, these knobs. And if you need, like the screws were just a little bit too long. And so I needed to use those um, little doohickeys. <laughs> what are they called? I don't know. And then I went in with some of my artificial tulips. And because spring, is, it feels like spring is here. And here's a little close up you can see of the texture. Isn't it beautiful? I love it. You can see I got like a booger there. I need to sand that. You just like lightly, lightly sand that. There's a couple spots I do need to touch up now that I'm looking at it close up. <laughs> but it's great because you can just go back and, and touch it up. And this will not need a top coat unless you're doing this on kitchen cabinets or a, a table or chairs that's going to get a lot of abuse. Something like a dresser, you can't. You don't need a top coat. I've had these on my nightstand. I've had this finish on my nightstands and they, it has held up so great. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.